Welcome to Resolve in a Rush, where you'll learn useful Resolve tips and tricks in about five minutes. With the release of version 15.2 of DaVinci Resolve, there are some great new features, and I'm going to try and cover as many of my favorites as possible in about five minutes. And once again, I'll start off with the improvements to the keyboard mapping system. That's right, it has improved yet again. Now, instead of hunting through a settings dialog, keyboard customization is accessible directly from the DaVinci Resolve menu. Behold, the beautiful new visual interface. This allows you to select various keys and combinations of keys to see what they do. Additionally, the on-screen keyboard highlights keys that are already assigned to shortcuts. The keys assigned to multiple shortcuts will show this little annotation in the corner. Selecting these keys will show you what commands they perform in various functional areas of Resolve. You can also search for specific commands here, as well as browse through all of the available commands. You may also see the new Panels category in the Commands list, which allows you to configure custom commands on a more context-specific basis. Before moving on, the tools for managing your custom layouts are located in these menus in the corner. Now I'll close this and we'll move on. The next new feature is the Module Indicator, which appears over whichever panel or module you have in focus. This can have an impact on which command your keyboard shortcuts will be performing. Next is the new Duplicate Detection feature. To enable it, simply go to the View menu and choose Show Duplicate Frames. And DaVinci Resolve will highlight any duplicate frames in your timeline. If that isn't awesome enough, it will automatically group duplicates according to various color tags. This is great for doing promotional work or anything that relies heavily on B-roll that you don't want to get repetitive. Another huge improvement is the used media indicator in the media pool. This shows you the ranges of clips that you have in a timeline. You can also ease keyframes directly from the inspector by right-clicking on the keyframe indicator. This also works in the keyframe editor within the timeline. Keep in mind that this does depend on a given parameter supporting animation curves. Another very welcome new feature is that the inspector's focus follows the playhead. In other words, if the playhead is sitting over a clip, that is the clip that will be open in the inspector. A couple of quick notes on this. If you have a clip selected, that one will always take priority in the inspector. Pressing Command-Shift-A or Control-Shift-A will deselect anything in the timeline and allow the playhead to determine focus. The other thing to keep in mind is that it will always focus on the top clip. So if you like to build your timeline like a skyscraper, you'll have to deliberately select the clip you want if it's not the top. Next, there are a couple of new plugins that are very useful. To get the most out of them, apply them in the color page. The first one is the beauty effect. This is similar to the face refinement tool, but it's a little more DIY and flexible. It doesn't do any of the fancy face tracking, nor does it segment the face for you. However, it can be a lot more useful if your talent is moving a lot, or if you're trying to smooth out the skin on multiple subjects at the same time. Just slapping it onto a clip looks horrible, but if you use it in conjunction with a qualifier to isolate the skin tones, it can produce outstanding results. It would be easy to compare the face refinement tool to a scalpel and this new beauty tool to a hatchet. But with a little trial and error, you'll see that the beauty tool is a pretty surgical hatchet. Next is the vertical video modesty effect, or more accurately, the blanking fill effect. Now, normally I wouldn't cover this one because vertical video is a cardinal sin. However, we all get clients that like to use it for advertising, social media stuff, and this will help you out. The controls are very straightforward and it'll help you get rid of the unsightly pillar boxing. The Fairlight page is also continuing to show improvement, but we're running short on time here, and those features are a bit more involved. But it is important to note that Fairlight is growing and maturing at a very steady pace. And we're out of time. Don't forget to reach out to us with anything you'd like us to cover in future episodes. Stay tuned for more great DaVinci Resolve tips and tricks here on our channel, or go to our website, riffletraining.com, for the best tutorials out there. Now, go out and make something incredible.